actually hear me in stereo or not. But I did want to share today uh, something I'm really excited about. And it's going to be the next camera that I pick up. And it's just this one over here. I, it's, it's not actual size. My hands aren't actually miniature or this camera isn't actually giant. It's the Panasonic G95 that was announced recently, but not available yet. And so it's not available, I think, until May. And I cannot wait till it's available because my good friend, Rob, um, Rob Brown. Where are you, Rob? Thank you so much. Shout out to Rob. Good guy. All around awesome dude. Um, amazingly technically efficient with everything Panasonic because he actually is their technical educator. Anyways. And so he brought some toys to play with at a, at a lunch that we had together. And he brought this beast, which, you know, everybody's talking about. The Panasonic Lumix S1, which is their foray into full frame cameras. But this actually wasn't the camera that I was excited to look at. The camera I was excited to look at was actually the little guy, it's little brother, which was announced, which is the Panasonic G95. And this is not a full frame camera. It is a micro four thirds camera. So just teeny tiny little sensor. But, but um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit why I, I'm, I've gone this way and uh, why I'm actually adding this to the stable even though I have the Sony a7 III. Bob says, hello Dave, doing good, thanks. Hope the family's doing well. We are, thank you so much, man. And Hardik, welcome here and welcome to the show. And on YouTube, I can't see you again, but if you comment, I'll comment back as well. But thanks for being here, guys. So let's just jump into it right now. So I got the G95 to use for a couple of days, and I went to the um, very beautiful uh, Calgary Public Library, and I made this video with the kit lens. And I should make a note, the kit lens is nothing special. It is a 12 millimeter to 60 millimeter, 3.5 to 5.6, which means one, it kind of sucks in low light, and two, it's equivalent to a wide angle 24 inch, to 120, and so it's a do everything lens. So let's take a look at some footage straight out of camera. This is shot at 60p, but then played back at 24p. So no color grading whatsoever. If everything was shot manually, I think it might have froze. Okay, try this one. So literally, I went to work at the Calgary Library and brought the camera and just shot some footage. And so I was floored with the stabilizer, the IBIS in camera. And the sense, uh, the lens is not stabilized, but the in-camera, like, it's just crazy how good the stabilization is. To note, I need to spend more time with the S1, but the S1 has incredible stabilization, terrible, like, way, way superior to the Sony IBIS. I, I think the lens on that one was stabilized, but I was shocked how stable the S1 footage, and it will be the king of stabilization for full frame, for sure. Yusuf, good to have you here, man. Um, but one thing that I did notice, that, like, this, nothing is without, um, nothing is perfect. And why, Dave, would I pick up a G95 if I already have a Sony? And, well, I love the full frame, and I love this beast. It is a bit heavier, but it's not really the weight that I was worried about. The, the, primary reason why I got the G95 was because I, want, I needed unlimited record time. So 30 minutes is great, even for B-roll and most interviews, but sometimes you just need unlimited record time. If you're shooting events, if you're shooting live stuff, it's actually nice to have that full-time unlimited recording. And the second reason was I just needed another B cam that could do 4K and have great color quality. And as you saw in that video, that was straight out of camera with absolutely no tinkering with the color. Now, nothing's perfect. And there were a few things that I did notice. And one thing was that there was wire, wow. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure it's because they don't have an anti-aliasing filter, but if you take a look at where I've circled it in the top left corner, 
as well as right beside or between those dudes there, you'll notice that there's that artifacting, which is the wire pattern that you're noticing when you have patterns like that. Now, it's not huge. And if you're not doing like clothing videos or photography, then it's not going to be a big deal. And there is software that allows you to get rid of that. But it's a thing to note. Another thing that I did notice was that the skin tones, um, I didn't correct when I walked into a new area. And if you notice, the, the colors shifted a little bit to blue. And the skin tones here are a little bit pale, but um, that might have been my mistake because I didn't change my white balance when, compared to when I was full of you know skylight against wood, which was super warm, okay? So I have to do some more testing to see what the skin tones look like and how well they match with my Nikons. And the last thing that I did notice, not on this shoot, but this is also um, just shooting some behind the scenes while I'm shooting headshots. I noticed that it breathes so, the, um, yeah, I video focusing. I think you're good at faking it, but actually, yeah, that was I'm a kidding. concern. But that being said, it is a very low light in here. The light, all lights so, are off except for the actual really? light. Oh, man. It's a 250 watt so, light, but that's lighting the whole room here. And the other thing that I did notice, um, yeah, is it, it's not going to give you, um, as, like, medium. Uh, micro Four Thirds is never going to give you as good low light performance or shallow depth of field as full frame. So don't even go there. Like I, I made a video and I'll link to it at the end um, about how does Micro Four Thirds compare in a full frame world and got a lot of flack for some of the things that I've said, but I still believe that. And that's why I'm adding this one to the stable. So the other thing that I wanted to compare this to is the most popular camera in recent memory for Micro Four Thirds. Sure, Panasonic, the GH5, and the GH5S have been super popular, but Blackmagic came out with their Pocket Cinema 4K, and it has got a phenomenal response so far. You know, like it's got amazing raw video capabilities, and so that sounds impressive to me. 14 stop dynamic range, you can record right to raw onto SD cards if you wanted because they've got a great compression ratio. Um, but my concern was that this is. And I, so many times I actually researched this camera. I've, I've looked at all the footage that people put out there. And I think, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Is Micro Four Thirds, I can adapt all my lenses to it. But it was always kind of too much camera for me in the regard that I would probably never shoot it raw because I don't want to deal with the file sizes in my workflow. And if I was shooting for Hollywood, then that makes more sense to shoot, you know, 14 stops and get all that dynamic range. But if I'm trying to shoot, edit, and deliver even for the same day, which I have done for events, then I really don't want to bog down my computer, crash my computer, and deal with all that footage. And so... I've kind of hummed and hawed. And there's also a lot of drawbacks to the Pocket 4K cinema. You kind of need to deck it out a lot. Like that plastic body, I mean, this funny little thumbnail of this hand kind of shows you how poorly ergonomic this thing is. Like there's no flip screen, so you have to be behind it to see the screen. There, it's like a plastic body that's really chintzy that people don't trust because even the heavier lens on the front might like bend it <laughs> off the, the actual mount. Um, the battery life is totally sucks. They use like little tiny little Canon batteries that last like 20 minutes, I think, for recording in 4K. So really, how usable is it without kitting it up? And it doesn't come with a lens. So it's more expensive than a G80, G95 with the kit lens and yes, it can do amazing raw things, but I think it was the wrong camera for me until this G95 came out. And then I realized, oh my goodness, it's got IBIS, unlimited record time, 12 stops of dynamic range with V-Log built in, although it's 8-bit. And um, it just is really easy to get great footage out of this little camera. And um, yeah, that's why I've got it. And um, that's about all I want to share for today. But I do have more footage that I shot when I adapted my Nikon lenses, even the cheap 50 millimeter 1.8. And I don't have autofocus, but actually going around and getting B-roll with it was beautiful. I am so impressed. And you can get bokeh with a Micro Four Thirds with the right glass. And a speed booster especially adds that little, uh, that makes it beautiful. Um, but it's not going to, again, compare to a full frame. But use each for its strengths. And so when I'm adding the G95, I'm going to be using that for my wide angle. Then I'm going to be using this one for my run and gun as well as be beautiful bokeh and all that jazz, right? Low light king. This is going to be the one, the Sony. So different tools for different jobs. If I have apples and oranges, I'm not going to try to make turn my apple into an orange. I'm just going to eat an orange if I want an orange. So use the micro four thirds for its strengths, you know, wide angle, 
great performance, unlimited record time, no overheating issues, and then use full frame for its strengths as well. And so we've also got beautiful bouquet, we've got great low light, and uh, just a robust camera with weather sealing as well. So there you have it. That's it for now. Hi, Niven. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you guys here. And I will be trying to do more live streams a little bit more um, regularly, but my schedule is a little bit everywhere. The next two days I have shoots outside of the studio, so I can't do these, but um, I do want to get back into it and I don't want to be a ghost. <laughs> I'm not that funny, but before I let you go, I do have a thought of the day. And the thought of the day comes from Ken Costa. I was doing my devotionals and Ken Costa um, was the guy who was leading it. It's be willing, be humble, be hopeful. And it is Monday morning uh, or afternoon now. Oh my goodness, it's so late. But um, these words really spoke to me, to be willing, be humble, be hopeful. And these are words that I would love to live by. So thank you to you silent YouTube watchers as well, whoever you are, because I can't see who you are. And for all of you on YouTube, uh, on Facebook as well. Uh, cheers, guys. Oh, beautiful Quinn's pottery here. Quinspired. I am Quinspired. So God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.